How's it going everybody? Corbin here from Zoco Marketing. In today's video, we are going over the ultimate beginner's guide to Google Analytics, how to navigate it, the reports that you actually need to know, and how to get benefit from the data that Google Analytics collects. This video does also assume that you already have Google Analytics installed on your website. If you don't, feel free to check out the video, the description down below. I do have a couple of videos on how to set a Google Analytics up on a WordPress site or Shopify or all different sites. So check out that link down below if you wanted to follow those videos along on how to install Google Analytics on your site. But we're gonna jump in as if you have Google Analytics installed already. Now, before we begin, there is something important to know, and that is that there are two different Google Analytics. And I know this may cause a lot of confusion for people that are new to Google Analytics, but in 2020, Google came out and released a new version of Google Analytics called Google Analytics 4. The version before that was called Google Universal Analytics. Now, as of the time of this recording, it is recommended to have both Google Analytics 4 and Universal Analytics inside, or, uh, installed on your website. But for the purpose of this tutorial, because Google Analytics 4 is the future of Google Analytics, that is what this tutorial is fo focused on. And if your dashboard looks something like this, then that means you are in Google Analytics 4. But if it looks something like this inside of here, when you come in, then you are inside of, let me get into the view here. And this, once this loads up, is universal analytics. So slightly different. There are a lot of different differences between the two, but going forward, Google Analytics 4 is gonna be the future. So that's why I want what I want to train people on. And if you're new to analytics, that's what I recommend you focusing on. And, and how to know if you have Google Analytics or Google Analytics 4 is if you come here to your properties and apps, you'll notice that Google Analytics 4 does not have a little UA code in front of your ID. So you'll see here that this has UA, that means your universal analytics, the old version. And over here, GA4 is the new version. So we're gonna go back over into here and that is the account that we're gonna be focusing on today. Now I am inside of the Google Merchandise Store demo account. Uh, if you wanted to follow along and get access to this account as well, I will leave a link to this page right here. And all you need to do is come down to access demo account, click on that link and you will get access to the Google Merchant Store demo account as well. So this is actual real data from the merchant store. So it's kind of fun to go through and look at this. Now that we got all of that stuff out of the way, please don't forget to subscribe if you find value in the video as we go along. And let's jump right in on how to actually use Google Analytics practically to find the reports that really matter to you as a business owner or a marketer or whatever it may be. So the first thing is we're inside of here of Google and Google Analytics 4. You notice that the dashboard is kind of laid out into a couple of different ways. You have the reports and then inside the reports, you have all of these different options inside of here. You have explore, advertising, and configure. For the purpose of this tutorial today, we're gonna to spend most of the time inside the reports. And inside of the reports, when you first come in, you have a snapshot that gives you an overview of your users, as you see here. Um, one thing that is helpful to do if you just wanted to get an idea of where your traffic is at, where it's trending, is if we come over here to the menu bar, you'll notice that you can obviously change the dates for whatever date range you wanted it to be. But also you could click this little compare button right here. This is something that I often do is, is click this little compare button so that we can see, compare either month over month or month over year or a certain week or whatever it may be. So for instance, if we wanted to compare this to the um, preceding period with the same date period, we click here and it gives us a quick idea of how our traffic is trending. So as you see for this Google merchandise store, it looks like this week has actually been kind of a, a little bit of a down week. Traffic is down 10% and as a result, um, revenue is down you know slightly at 3%. And then you can come through and do the same thing. Say you want to say, okay, well, how about um, comparing the last 28 days compared to this same time last year to get an idea of the trends on how you are pacing for different things. And same kind of story. It looks like it's slightly down for traffic. Revenue is about the same. So a little handy tool to um, be aware of when you are going through your Google Analytics account. The next thing is if you are new to Google Analytics 4, you'll have a tab right here for that it says insights. You will have to set this up. You'll probably have a button that says something like uh, set up insights or something along those lines. Go ahead and, and set those up. This is nice because it gives you a high level overview of anomalies inside of your account. So say traffic spikes or revenue spikes or revenue drops or traffic drops, whatever it may be. It, give, it just gives you a quick insight into kind of anomalies inside of there. So I do recommend checking this out. So say, say for instance, right here, it looks like performance or Google or can't organic drove most of the conversions. 48% from July 1st to the 31st. So that's something good to know. Maybe that tells you, okay, how can we optimize the other channels to perform as well as organic or what are we doing in organic right now that is really working? So I do really like this tab. This is something new in Google Analytics 4 and something I do recommend checking out often. 
So next, as we go through here, this just gives you a, a continues to give you a snapshot of everything else. But to be honest, I don't go through much past this, this steps right here when I'm just looking at Google Analytics. If I wanted to get more information on the data that is listed down below, I'll actually, it's, it's in more depth in these reports as we go through Google Analytics. So I'm gonna scroll back up here and now we're going to make our way over to this real-time report. And inside the real-time report, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's showing you in real time over the last 30 minutes, as you see users in the last 30 minutes, um, who is on your website. So you can see the location of where they're at. You can see the source that brought them there. So you see 21% uh, have come from, uh, from direct, seven from Google, and you can kind of go on, the list goes on and on. And then you have audiences. You can do you by page title, people who are coming through there, the event types, the conversion events, and the, even the property. So all useful information if you're going through and troubleshooting your account or you wanted to see where people are currently at on the users for your real-time report. So moving on, the next thing is we have these life cycles here. And this is where you'll probably spend most of the time, or this is where I spend most of the time when I'm trying to glean insights from Google Analytics is inside of these tabs right here. So the first one we have is the acquisition. We come over here to acquisition overview, which is a helpful overview for where your traffic actually came from. So as you can see, we have the users, new users, and I still have my compare feature on. You notice that I added that compare all the way at the beginning of the tutorial, and it's still following through all the way. If you wanted to turn this off, you just need to go back to this little icon here, flip that off, and then hit apply. And then now you'll notice that now it's not giving us the compare numbers inside of there. So we can scroll through here. This is just an overview of what's in this user acquisition and traffic acquisition reports. I'm actually just going to go straight to user acquisition. I find it to be a more helpful view to actually dissect the data and glean insights that I, I would like to see. We can see that over the past 28 days, here's where traffic came from. You can get an idea of the trends inside of here. And it gives us this view, which is, is very helpful. We can see organic, we can see direct, referral, CPC, affiliates, different things like that. Now, if you wanted to go through and change the, this is called a dimension. If you wanted to add different dimensions inside of here, instead of just the medium, you could add it right here. You could do it filter by campaign type. So we can click, and this is based on the UTM parameters that you have created. So here's the different UTM parameters, or you could filter it by um, source, source medium, whatever it may be, whatever you would like, or uh, whatever data you would like to see inside of there. Uh, you can also come through to whatever metric you wanna see. So right now it's filtering by new users, but say we wanted to see the pages that were getting us the most conversions, we could click here and then it would sort that data and I'm in the way a little bit. It will then sort the pages by the ones that are getting us the most conversions inside of the analytics view. You can change the page views or the, the rows per page, and then you can go to certain pages. And as you see, there's 106 pages in this view right here. And that kind of goes for all of the different views that you'll go in that kind of has a set similar table. So if we come in here to traffic acquisition, this is good for figuring out where your traffic was acquired. And it has kind of the same setup inside of there where you can go through and, and uh, add different dimensions, change the, the, the way this is sorted out and add more pages in the report. So next we have the engagement tab. This is where you can see things like events happening on your website or conversions. So if we come in here to events, Google Analytics 4 automatically sets up events for your website, such as page view, scroll, first visit, and different things along those lines, which are very helpful for you to see. But if you wanted to set up things like conversion tracking for revenue, that is something that you'll have to set up separately. I don't go, I'm not gonna go over that in this video, but if you wanted to check out a resource, check out my, uh, the link down below. I do talk about how to set up conversion tracking for Google Analytics. So if you are interested in that, then you can go through and follow the steps there. But you'll notice once this is once the conversion tracking is set up and you can see either whether it be your lead gen website or an e-commerce store, whatever those objectives may be, this may be look, look a little bit different, but for the Google merchandise store, they sell product directly. So you can come in here to the conversions and you'll notice that they have the purchase value and you can see what how much revenue that has actually brought in for the website. And you can also see the page be, uh, begin checkout, which is very helpful to optimize your flow through the funnel. Later on in this video, I will show you how to create a funnel that gives you a page views, add to cart purchases so you can see where the drop off is inside of your site. The next page there, next we have page and screens. And this is actually probably one of the most useful views for Google Analytics. When I come in here, this is one of the first places that I actually go through and check. And it's because it shows you which pages people are actually going to and where they're actually converting. Now in Google Analytics 4, the default here is for page title and screen classes, which may be good for some people, but I actually like to go through and change this to um, page path and query strings and screen classes. That way you can see exactly what the URL is 
as it's laid out right here. I find this view to be more helpful for me. So what makes this view so powerful, and I'm gonna move myself out of the way here, is I like to scroll over and look at the actual conversion rates for, or the conversions that are coming from each page. So as you notice, this is the home page. Google Merchant Center gets almost a, a big chunk of its traffic. So it looks like 300,000 of the conversion, or 30,000 of the conversions came directly from the home page. And if we filter this out to see by the highest, I'm assuming that probably is the highest page inside of there. We're waiting. And yeah, so the home page gets the most conversions inside of here. You notice that this page is getting all the revenue because that's where the checkout page is. So that kind of makes sense there. Now the next page, especially if you're an e-commerce store, this is very helpful. If you are running a lead gen site, this probably won't be a super helpful view for you. This is mostly for an e-commerce store, but the monetization, this gives you a lot of very helpful uh, information for your products and services. So if we click inside of here, here's the e-commerce purchases. You can see it lays out the actual products that, that people are buying, how many times the item is viewed, how many times it's added to cart, the add to cart rate, which is very helpful to know, the e-commerce, I'm gonna move myself again, I keep getting in the way, uh, the e-commerce purchases and then purchase to view rate. So this is awesome because it gives you a very quick snapshot of the conversion funnel where people are going, what products they're viewing, how often they're, they're adding those products to cart. And then of course, what really matters to you as a business is how much those items are producing in revenue. So we could go through and we could sort this by, okay, which ones, which products is selling the most, which one's getting us the most money. And it's being nice and slow, like always. Great time to forget, to remind you, don't forget to subscribe today if you find value in the video. And as you can see here, there's the products that are bringing the most, this black, uh, this Google Black Cloud Zip hoodie with $6,000 for the date range that we've specified inside of here. And then you have in-app purchases. If you have an app, public, um, publish your ads. This is for if you're running Google AdSense inside of your account. And for the Google Merchant Center, they are not running those. So this, if you're running ads on your blog or whatever it may be, that's how you would look at the, the, the data for how much revenue you're bringing in from those. And last, we have these two little tabs over here. So we're now at, uh, leaving this lifecycle tab. We're gonna come over to users and we have demographic reports so that you can see um, different demographic details. We can click inside of here and show you what I mean. I'm just floating around here. So this gives you more detail into where the people are that are purchasing or visiting your store. Very self-explanatory. And then tech, we have, you can break it out by tech details, tech overview what devices they're using, um, what browser or what browsers they're using, uh, the conversion rates of those browsers. Uh, gives you an idea if, if for some reason maybe Chrome is bringing in a lot of traffic but not a lot of sales, maybe something is broken on your site so that you can go through and optimize and find the details inside of there. Now we've covered everything that is in this reporting tab. Uh, I do want to briefly touch on this explore tab, um, but given the fact that this is a beginner's guide to Google Analytics, I don't want to go too deep into it because it can get a little bit more into the advanced setting side of things. Don't forget to subscribe because if you want more on uh, this explore tab, I will be creating more videos on that. And the advertising configure um, tabs, I do have videos linked down below. If you want to learn how to configure your events in Google Analytics, go through and check those out. But in this explore tab, there are a lot of cool things that you can do. This is where you can get into more customization reports customization, customized reports, uh, essentially. Um, as you can see, you can create your own blank one and add in any data fields, or you can go through and look at some of the templates that they have, for instance, for this page path, we can click inside of here. I recommend if you're first starting off, just start with one of the templates that they have and then find ways to modify those. You can add different segments. So here we have all the different segments we want, different dimensions. And right now this is giving me an error for some reason. We're gonna let this load for a second. All right, and here it is, it's loaded back up. So this just gives you a flow of your traffic, lots of different things. I don't know why it keeps giving me this error. We're gonna cancel this right here because everything's loading. And as you can see, you can come through and there are lots, this, this needs to have its own essentially YouTube video to go through and cover all of these things. But I do wanna make sure that you are aware of it if you wanna just go through and start playing in these different um, settings, but also another very powerful part of Google Analytics. But if you're just beginning off, the reporting tab will pretty much get you all of the basics that you need to know on the, the web traffic, how it's performing, and what's bringing in either leads or revenue for you. So hopefully you found video, uh, value in this video today. Please don't forget to subscribe if you found a value in the video today. And don't forget to drop a like down below. We'll see you in the next video.